Harry's Wife. Part 79.12 Tiara Tantrum We're taking a step back in time, but we're only doing it because a news article is taking a step back in time. And Yahoo! Entertainment reports with an article by Kristen Burt. The Queen reportedly did clash with Harry's wife over her wedding tiara choice after all. The article explains... There have long been rumours about the tiara Harry's wife wore on her wedding day as her second choice. And now, royal biographer Andrew Morton has a fresh perspective on the issue. He's released new chapters in his book, Harry's Wife, a Hollywood Princess, that reportedly shed some light on how it all went down with Queen Elizabeth. Morton believes that Prince Harry wanted his grandmother to give his future bride everything that she wanted. Well, of course, we are familiar with the, quote, what Harry's wife wants, Harry's wife gets. But the Queen was not pleased with being told what to do. Well, no, nobody likes to be told what to do. Unless, of course, you have consented by reason of, for example, being placed within a hierarchy. You're in the armed forces, for instance, at the emergency services, where you accept that you are given orders and that you carry them out without questioning them. But ordinarily, people don't like to be told what to do. The Queen doesn't like to be told what to do. She's a normal, but people, other than narcissists, do need a degree of control in their life. They don't need it as extensively as we do. We are hypersensitive to the issue of control. But as the monarch, and somebody that is used to being treated with respect is an individual that is not going to allow some Jane come lately to come along and tell her how things should be done. The article explains, In November 2018, just days after the couple returned from their successful tour Down Under, where they went to Australia, the Times reported that Harry's wife had thrown a tiara tantrum shortly before her wedding because the tiara she wanted to wear was not available. The excerpt reads, per Yahoo. The Queen wasn't interested in any wedding nonsense and snapped back, per Morton, she gets what tiara she's given by me. Absolutely. The Queen rejecting the attempt to assert control over her, and quite simply being done because the tiaras belong to the Queen. It's a little bit like saying to somebody, I'm going to lend you one of my dresses for this big event because you don't have a suitable one. Thank you very much, that's very kind of you, would say a non-narcissist, and they would accept the dress that they were provided with. If, of course, it was entirely unsuitable, they might politely ask, I think this is too big for me, do you have one that's more in my size? But they wouldn't turn around and say, actually, I don't want that dress, I want that one over there, give me that dress of yours. That, would, that of course, is the response of an individual exhibiting a sense of entitlement, a lack of accountability for their behaviour, and also doing so for the purposes of asserting control. So when it came to the tiara, of course, Harry's wife, with her sense of entitlement, decided she wanted that one. And the Queen determined no. And it would appear because the Queen had reserved it for Princess Eugenie for her wedding to Jack Brooksbank. We'll come to that in a moment. But Harry's wife t bowls up, fairly new entry into the royal family, and starts trying to dictate the way that it is. She does so because she needs to do so, driven by her unaware narcissism, for the purpose of the assertion of control and drawing fuel. The article tells us, ouch, that doesn't sound like a pleasant scenario, and Harry was apparently irate at the snub. Harry would be irate because, of course, at this point he's in the golden period still. He's bedazzled, he has been charmed and enchanted, by Harry's wife and her manipulative wiles, and no doubt the copious lashings of spicy poontang and roast chicken that he was getting at the time. He falls in love with her, and when he finds that somebody says no about something that she wants, he, of course, having a narcissistic trait of anger and argumentativeness, those traits rise, and he lashes out on behalf of his wife. Moreover, of course, he 
At that juncture, will have been treated well. He's painted white. And therefore, like a dog given little chocolate drops as a reward, Harry will have been given repeated rewards for his good behaviour, as in each moment he exhibited he was under behaviour and overall demonstrated that he was more and more coming under the ultimate control of Harry's wife. So when he did something good, he got to roast the chicken. When he did something good, he was complimented. He was given apparent support about his own shortcomings and circumstances, a la, for example, loss of his mother. And therefore, with these behaviours, he was given a treat and reward. And this is what we do. And consequently, when we do this, we provide you with a reward during the golden period. It might be money. It's often compliments buying you gifts, giving you great sex, taking you to interesting places, being supportive, helpful, doing things for you. Of course, we're only motivated to do all of this because you are coming under our control and we're drawing fuel from you, and we're in that period of seduction where you're painted white, and therefore our narcissism causes us to see you as brilliant and wonderful, and therefore we respond in a corresponding fashion. There's no need to punish you. And of course, because Harry's getting these repeated rewards and governed by the addiction caused, uh, the emotional thinking caused by his addiction, he wants more of it. Think back to your early ensnarement, those of you that have been involved with a narcissist. Do you remember when you wanted more and more of the narcissist? You didn't know what they were at the time, but you had a brilliant evening together and you wanted to see the narcissist the next night also. You wanted to spend more time with the narcissist. You wanted to have more sex. You wanted to sit and talk into the early hours because it was so interesting. You had so much in common. Or, of course, you were being led to believe that you had so much in common. Harry had the same, and therefore he didn't want to lose that, and hence he has an irate reaction driven by his own narcissistic traits of anger and argumentativeness. The article continues... But that story is very different from how the couple portrayed the selection of the tiara. When it came to the tiara on the day, I was very fortunate to be able to choose this very gorgeous Art Deco style bandeau tiara. Harry's wife narrated the Royal Wedding Outfit exhibition, exhibition rather, that was on display at Windsor in 2019 per Yahoo. Harry and I had gone to Buckingham Palace to meet with Her Majesty the Queen to select one of the options that were there, which was an incredibly surreal day as you can imagine. She chose, she says she chose the particular tiara because it was clean and simple and created an incredibly timeless but still feel modern with her wedding dress. A revision of history, whereby, of course, she was told, you're not having that one, you're having this one. And therefore, when that comes back upon the radar at a later juncture, her narcissism revises history to make it sound like she chose it all along so that she's able to nullify the threat to control posed by the Queen saying... Not so fast, Jane, come lightly. That one's yours. An additional plot twist to the story is a small detail revealed by author, improbably named Omid Scobie, in Funding Freedom, I mean Finding Dollars, I beg your pardon, Finding Freedom, where he alleges that Harry's wife's first choice was the Greville Emerald Kokoshink Tiara, which was given to Princess Eugenie for her wedding to Jack Brooksbank just five months later. And, of course, that is within the Queen's gift, and she wants to save it for her granddaughter. And she's not going to allow Harry's wife to wear it and then Eugenie to wear it, so it's quite simply, no, that one's reserved, you can have a different one. While it may look like a petty move by the Queen to some, not at all, entirely sensible, it could also mean she already had the tiara in mind for her granddaughter long before Harry's wife's request, indeed. No matter what, both brides look stunning on their wedding day, and any tiara tantrum reports three years after the weddings seem like ancient history now. But they're not, because they're being brought up by you, Yahoo, and I'm commenting on it, and also Morton and Scobie have commented about it further. The fact is that for the purposes of maintenance of assertion of control, something from the past will always be brought up by us. Ordinarily, when something has happened, it falls off the edge of the cliff, it's gone, it's evaporated into the ether. However, when it comes to the issue of something in the past which can aid us in the assertion of control and the drawing of fuel and the gaining of character traits and residual benefits in the now, we will repeatedly bring up the past. So the issue of the tiara isn't buried dead, 
because nothing is ever buried dead when it comes to our kind. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.